Hey everybody, so in this week's video, I'm gonna show you some adult ball python morphs that are affordable that look really nice. You know, a lot of ball pythons, almost all ball pythons look awesome as babies, but not all of them are just as awesome as adults. So once every year to two years, I like to go through and show some of my favorite adult morphs. And this video, and this is actually part one of a two part, I'm gonna show you guys some morphs that are pretty affordable so the average person could own them as a pet so like we're talking under a thousand dollars probably most of them in probably like the four to five hundred dollar range actually so um it you know if you want a ball python that's that hatches out and it looks great and it's gonna look great as an adult these are the ones for you so let's just start off with the first one this is a pastel desert ghost desert ghost is awesome it cleans everything up so nice and bright uh it kind of reduces the the flecking and the muddiness in the pattern of the normal pastel and just a really nice morph. And of course, desert, you know, I, I'm showing this example of a pastel, but almost all desert ghosts are really, really impressive, whether they have pastel in them or not. But pastel is actually a gene that works really well with desert ghosts. So, um, you know, definitely don't be afraid to get your pastel with some desert ghost in it. Just a really nice, clean snake. So this is an adult female. And this individual is actually a het clown, but um, this is you know just an example of a nice looking pastel desert ghost. Okay, and the next one I'm gonna show you is a Tofino. This is a Tofino black pastel. And Tofinos are really nice. Basically, it's a visual double het toffee and albino. So it's got one toffee gene and one albino gene, and they're allelic. So when you breed them together, you get a visual morph, and that's the Topino. So the Topinos in general are really nice looking. You can't go wrong really with hardly any of the different um, uh, combos, but this one has black pastel in it, and it's one that I really like a lot because it, it brings out those lavender colorations. And in my opinion, Topinos are actually, I think, nicer than most lavender albinos. Um, they've got really, uh, nice lavenders, really bright yellows, and just a really nice contrast. These are awesome looking as babies, and I think they look really awesome as adults too. So I'm going to show you a lavender albino in part two of this video series, uh, a black pastel lavender albino, so you'll be able to see what that looks like compared to this, which that one's still really impressive, but if you want, uh, if you want one that's going to actually have lavender coloration, this is the best option. Okay, and then something pretty similar genetically to this one is this one. This is actually a black pastel Enchi, and it's either a Toffee or a Toffino. I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, I've, I've had one clutch of her babies hatch so far. And uh, the problem with, with the albino versus topino versus toppy is that they all look like albinos when they first hatch and you have to let them grow for a while. Uh, the best way to tell if it's a toppy or not is the eye color is much, much darker than, than an albino for sure. And it's darker than most topinos too. So I'm pretty sure that this is actually a toppy, but it doesn't have the lavender coloration because of the enchi in that. But either way, I think it's a really nice looking morph. And again, it's, it's an affordable animal too. Actually, I actually have a few of these available right now. Okay, the next one I'm gonna show you, we're gonna get into a few codoms now or incomplete dominance. This is one that I really like. This is a super Enchi pastel leopard. And it may be fire too. I'm thinking no on the fire because if it was fire, I think it would be a little bit lighter in coloration than that, but I'm not sure. I'm actually breeding this to a super orange dream, super enchy right now. So trying to get those, those yellows and oranges to come out even nicer. But I just think it's a really cool looking snake and it's a you know relatively simple combination. Look at that head. She's being a little bashful right now. She's not produced a clutch for me yet, but I'm hoping that this season will will uh, go that way. And and you know everything she produces is going to be really nice. And of course, she's not going to show herself off to her fullest extent because she's bashful. Okay, 
then the next one I have here is a pastel freeway. Now these look really different as adults than when they're babies. They're basically um, white and black with a little bit of yellow when they're babies and then the white turns to yellow as they grow. But I think that it's just a nice looking morph. I mean, it you know it keeps contrast really nice. It does get a lot of speckling in it. Uh, there are other genes that of course I can add into it to reduce that. But I just think for the money, it's a really nice looking morph. And again, this one has pastel in it too. Uh, they look great without pastel as well. I just think that this one's a little bit nicer because it's got such high contrast between the light and the dark pattern. Okay, this one is a GHI Mystic Potion. And Mystic Potions in general are really nice looking. I probably should have shown one of those as well, but I thought that this was the best looking version of a Mystic Potion. Um, getting the GHI in there basically really reduces, it darkens the, the head color a little bit and it really reduces the side pattern quite a bit. It just basically has a stripe down the back. So not a not a like a bright intensely colored snake, but really cool anyway. I mean, not everybody wants a bright yellow or orange snake. Some people like snakes with a little bit of darkness to them. I think this is a really good example of a fairly affordable darker morph. Okay, and then the last one is a blue-eyed leucistic. Uh, those are one of the most popular ball python morphs uh, for a long time. Back in the history of breeding ball pythons, you know, 20 years ago, the, the holy grail of ball pythons was a solid white snake. And everybody was chasing to figure out ways to make them. And then once they found out that lessers, butters, mojaves, and things like that in the blue and leucistic complex could make them, uh, the demand for all those went way up because everybody wanted these. So as a a breeding project you know i mean a white snake is a white snake it's got blue eyes you can't really go anywhere with this from here other than i've been able to make red-eyed leucistics so albino blue-eyed leucistics and also lavender albinos but um <clears throat> you know the the blue-eyed leucistic in general really popular really affordable and really nice looking Okay, so that's it for part one. I've got some more really cool snakes. I just could not narrow it down to do a single video on this. So got some more really cool st snakes to show you in the next one. Make sure to please like and subscribe. That would really help me out a lot. Also go to my website, royalconstrictordesigns.com and you can see some of these and a ton of other snakes available right now. A lot of them are very affordable. Uh, so make sure to go and check that out. And you can also uh, find a link to my Patreon uh, at the bottom of my homepage on the website. Uh, you can go there, we have a very affordable Patreon. You get a lot of exclu exclusive videos. You get signed up for a free snake giveaway. We do one a week throughout the entire year. Uh, we've got some other really cool things too. We got Zoom calls and a lot of other things. So basically, uh, please check that out as well. And I'll be back very soon with part two of this video series.